What's up guys? Today is a very cool day. Um, it is Thursday. Today is my last class of the week. Um, and all my parts are here for my Z, so I'm going to start on building the Z tonight. Um, I'll talk a little bit more before I get started of what I'm all doing, but it should be done hopefully all this weekend, so we'll see. What's up guys? Today we'll be putting in my extended, or shortened, I'm sorry, shortened upper uh, control arms here. <sighs> sorry about my light, at least I have one. It was pretty dark before, so this is a lot better than it was. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and start to pull it out. So now I got a 6 point socket, 14 millimeter. I'm going to break it loose. Um, my most advantage is going to be going, yeah, probably this one. So you see I'm, I'm hitting it really gently. Um, hitting it really hard with your hands, I've been told many times by many mechanics, will give you arthritis. I know that and yet choose to do it anyway. Not, but I don't do it very hard. I, I don't do it I think hard enough to give me arthritis. But I guess they probably didn't think that either, otherwise they probably wouldn't have done it. Oh, I just realized something. I should probably get out the ball joint first. Alright, so like I was saying before I distracted myself, um, this is simply to get me more camber, and that's it. There's nothing else really that it's going to benefit. It's going to make my tire wear much worse, and that's about it. Oh, like a pro. Hold up. Hold up. Like a pro, come on. Oh yeah, not my first. Oh yeah, not my first cotter pin, boy. Again, giving myself arthritis at a young age. It's fine. Okay. Okay, I can't tell if it's moving. It ain't moving. So what we got to do now, this is a tie rod fork or a ball joint fork. I don't care about this ball joint. I'm just trying to hold it. I just need to somehow get in here on it in some position. Yes. This will work. If I can get it to work. Oh, chill out, money shot. Found the right angle. Yeah, what's up, sucker? Let's see what's up now. I don't think it's coming. I need to get pliers. Oh yeah, we're getting it. Get this by hand. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Home stretch. Whoa, it's free. Okay, that took me, I guess, not as long as I thought it would. All right, so now I just gotta get these side bolts out. Yeah, boy. One more side. Oh. Cake. It's cake, brah. Sorry about that angle, that kinda sucks. That is the last bolt right there. We're just gonna lock our sights on and then doom, crack that sucker loose. Yes, free this bolt. Free this bolt. You will free this bolt. You will come free. I'm sweating guys. I'm sweating guys, drop a thumbs up. I'm sweating guys. There you go. We're gonna get this bolt out. If you drop it like right now, we're gonna get this bolt out. Oh, come on. Right now. Boom, you must. All right, something ain't going right. All right, guys, something ain't going right. Let's go left. Let's go left. Yes. In the chat, let's go left. Oh, can I move the spring? What must be done? 
All right, so this is why it's gonna have more camber. You can see that the ends line up right here, but the ball joints do not. They're off by a good bit, because these are shortened pretty decently. They're shortened by an inch and a half. So, thanks to Charlie Thompson who did the work for me. They turned out fantastic. I'm excited to get them in. All right, everything is done. I'm gonna throw on the first, first wheel and see what's up with the new fitment. Um, this is still my old wheels. Just for now, just so I can see how these old ones fit in comparison to how my new ones will fit. Because these are 18 and somewhat similar sizes. Uh, I'm running standard preload, so nothing, nothing crazy. There's my wheel moving. All right, I gotta fix that wheel. Hold up. All right, I don't think I'll be able to get it accurately lifted at the moment. But wow, my front specs are weak now. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a lot more tilted though. Yeah, that's different, that's different for sure. I actually probably won't show you guys as much of doing the other side, because I think you got the idea on this one. Um, besides that, I'm just adjusting my coils. I've done that in several videos before, so I'll probably leave uh, me doing this other side out, that way I can just go quick on it. Alright, the first piece I'm going to start with is that traction arm right there. Um, I'm going to get that outer bolt out first. There's a 17. If you need to, link the wrenches. Right, let me crack that loose, hold up. Okay, I ended up linking the two wrenches and that got it out. Um, some people will cut, like from right here, and just cut that little bit out. Um, I didn't have to on the other side. Everything came out fine, so we'll see how this side is. I, I don't know why you would cut that exactly. I had no problem getting it in and out. I don't want to mess with that arm yet. Next arm is going to be that end of the spring bucket there. I'm just going to get that out of the way so I can impact the rest of the traction arm off. And I mean, I'm going to need to get it out of the way anyway, so I might as well do it now. All right, it's going to be hard to get a camera in there as I'm getting it from this side, so that's where it is. That is where the inner one is, that's where I'm going to be impacting from. And the other side I'm just going to be holding with a wrench right there, so that's what I'll show you. Oh my gosh. Aw, oh, man. Fuck. Really? Alright, I just went for a nice little stroll in the rain, and God. A 17 millimeter non-impact socket. Will this work? We can hope. Fantastic. All right, so now I can pull. All right, I might actually have to cut the side on this side. I didn't on the other side, but this side's looking like it wants to be an A-hole. Um, but I'm gonna pull out the, the camber arm next. 17 on both sides again. Oh, purring, purring like a, starting like a kitten, as Rudnick would say. All my arms are like moving, that's cool. Um, also, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of sorting my bolts. I sort of just know where they go. But if you don't know where your bolts go, you probably want to sort them. Alright, I gotta get off the, the sway bar now. Let me get you a better angle of that. It's dropped on both sides, by the way. That's why I have so much free movement of it. Okay, cam burns out. All right, I'll be honest, that traction arm slipped out a lot easier than I thought it was going to. So I'm gonna try to put it back in now, the new one. 
it is fully retracted but keep in mind that uh, this this style does have like an on and an off side so I'm just gonna try to work it on there and done that took two seconds I'm just gonna start this bolt on the inside and I still gotta get out the rest of the spring bucket I'm just kind of scared to start with that because it's it's stuck on the other side still All right, the bolts are started for my traction arms what is up guys today is hopefully gonna be the last video on cambering the 350 um, as far as I know all the parts are here I still do need those custom axle spacers but for now I think I'll be fine um, so I have a separate video now about putting in the axle spacers. I will put that one in the top corner right now to go look at it if you haven't already. GK Tech still sells them at the time of uploading this, so um, you can go grab a set off them if you plan on doing this. Um, now the last thing I have to do before I'm fully finished after installing all the rear arms is putting in um, a centric lockout bolt. That is the last last piece to the puzzle here um, and I'll explain what these do in a second so that is what a stock eccentric bolt looks like right there in the middle you can see the the washer on it is oblong um, and as you turn it in the hole it'll move that entire bolt and move the whole arm these are the only stock adjustments for the rear camber um, I, I don't believe they allow too much maybe a degree or two um, SPC makes an upgraded version that basically has this whole top flat and that gives you like negative two degrees and plus two degrees of adjustment um, however in my case where I have aftermarket arms I have these now these are lockouts so they just fit in the same size hole as that and just make it so that the bolt can't move back and forth at all and that all of my adjustment is in my arms um, the reason I'm doing this is because if you hit a bump really hard with these even though they're tight and, as you can tell, get very rusted and corroded in place, it can still bump the arm a little bit, and it's not a very accurate way of aligning a car. Um, doing it with all the arms is a lot smarter, especially because I have all the arms now. So I just have to get all the eccentric lockouts in, which is going to be a pain in the ass, and then I'm done. really don't want to get bashed in the head today, though. Again. I've already gotten hit in the head like twice. Sure. Already got the bolt started. Not to, not to jinx it. Oh, I'm gonna jinx it. It's so bad. I just need to get that bolt a little bit more in there. Very good. Reluctantly, but she's going. So I'm gonna just. Fight this thing for another 10 20 minutes, and I'll show you guys where I'm at. All right, awesome, all of the lockout kit is in. That went actually not as bad as I thought it would. So now I have to, to go around and just tighten all the all these bolts here because these are still loose. And then, uh, I guess it'll time be time for the, the eyeball alignment. Alrighty, I can tell the toes out a little, you can kind of see that it's uh definitely more out in the rear here so I can extend that front traction arm or whatever um, this side was pretty close but I did mess with it a little bit and now the toe does look a little bit messed up too so um, let me tighten all the rest of the bolts and then we'll start with an eyeball alignment I just called mr. tire which is over in that parking lot over yonder um, I got all the arms on and uh, I was gonna align it myself and uh, give it a go, but I think I can just take it to their shop and have them do it honestly, and that kind of sounds better than me doing it. Plus, it's so close, I can I can limp this thing over there. As long as the wheels are on tight, I think I'll be fine. I adjusted the camber arms. I'm gonna tighten all the things and put anti-seize on all of the all the moving parts, and uh, they'll probably upcharge me if I had to guess. They're probably gonna charge me more than more than what they quoted. But I'm going to raise the coils in the rear and uh, I guess get it over there. So, I'll show you guys when it's down. Might 
might be hard to believe, but this is raised an inch and a half from where it was. Old rolling rock in. So this is how I'm gonna drive it over and get it aligned. And it looks, it looks nothing short of crazy. So, um, hopefully I can get the camber kinda even. I didn't really want more camber in the rear, but since I'm here, I'm here, so. We'll see what they can do, and uh, I'll show you guys when I get back. Alright, so Mr. Tire fucked me, dude. I pulled up, and the store manager came out front. He said, you called, didn't you? I said, yes. And he said, there is no way we're getting that on our rack. I was like, it's so raised. I, I could get it on their rack. Like, I'm kind of butthurt. I think their techs are just not smart enough or something. Low key. I worked there before, and I absolutely hated it. I quit in a week. Um, maybe I'll tell that story one day, because that's kind of funny, but... The car is now moving, and it looks absolutely insane. I'm so, so stoked with the camber. Um, I think as an outro to this video, though, I'm going to do a, a sit-down explaining every single last piece to how I did the camber, just so you guys have a full start-to-finish idea of where I got the idea, how I accomplished everything, um, and, you know, just a nice, a nice synopsis to the video. But... I am so excited about this. Like, it looks unreal. Okay, um, I'm gonna do examples real quick of what the camber adjustment is actually doing. So right here we'll do front. And we'll just split the page in half here. And this side will be the rear. Okay, so in the front, I have upper control arms, and those are shortened by an inch and a half each. So those originally come looking in kind of a triangle shape like that, with the ball joint being like right here. Um, and to shorten them, all I did was I cut I didn't do any of the fabrication work, by the way, just let me say, I did not do any of it. But these, these areas here got shortened equally an inch and a half to give me a much shorter control arm. And the reason that works is because if you're looking at a wheel, we have a lower control arm here in the front. Um, my car, or hopefully, I'm guessing if you're watching this, you probably have a 350 as well. But my car is no front axles so there's nothing in the middle here to worry about then I have a coil over that goes up yep that's my coil over that looks good this drawing is so bad right now I know don't hose hose me not in the comments here um, so when I shorten this that takes the wheel and it pushes it in obviously so then you take your wheel it's retracted from the top a little bit because it's been pulled in. Um, if I wanted to go more camber in the front, I could do extended lower control arms. These are a little bit harder to find though, however. There's not adjustable lower control arms, so you'd have to get like a nicer aftermarket one and um, get that extended because uh, that would just push out. It would be this one extended and that would be pushing out um, and that would just give it more camber. Um, but right now I only have the upper control arm in the front and I'm at like negative probably seven degrees so I'm happy with that. Now moving on to the rear I have extended Godspeed tow camber and traction and those are all extended an inch and a half. I hear a lot of guys do two inches um, me personally, I had clearance issues even with the inch and a half shortened fronts and I had to shave my coilovers here down a little bit because um, the the knuckle was hitting it in the back here. Uh, I wouldn't do two inches. I think that's a little bit excessive. Uh, oh, another way to get front camber, by the way, is an angle kit, but I didn't do that either. So, in the rear here, here's our rear tire. Um, there is a small upper control arm with a little ball joint that goes to our spindle, 
with an axle in the middle here that goes to the differential pumpkin. That there is one uh, back here. This is the rear of the vehicle. This arm here is usually your spring bucket, so usually it would have a very big, wide shape like that. But um, the Godspeed arm eliminates that because I don't need a spring there anymore because I have true rear coilovers. There is one right here. This is called your traction arm. And then there's one underneath. And that is your camber arm. So all I'm doing is extending all of those on the bottom here and pushing pushing the bottom out. So the tilted tire comes from the camber arm underneath that allows the toe link to reach still and this is where I started running into an issue because if you see wait, now you got this tilted wheel this middle part here the axle starts to get pulled back a little bit because it's pushing out so much from the bottom here with the extended camber and, and toe links and stuff that now my axle was getting pulled as well and I didn't have I didn't have it extended and I didn't have spacers for it um, on top here there is a ball joint and that ball joint can move pretty freely I think eventually I'll blow the ball joint if I do too much camber but I'm not super concerned about that um, so my axle was getting stressed because now it's at this weird angle that it doesn't like and it's being pulled both directions because it's bolted in on the differential side right and it's got six bolts on this side and then it's got one big jam nut on the outside here and it's being stretched that distance there that's why I needed the axle spacer so the one that I got I got a we'll put it down here GK Tech 10 millimeter um, and that just pushed it back in this way a little bit back away from the hub so that it, it created less stress um, I can't really fix the geometry on it it sucks but this is basically uh, how I did my rear stuff and how I did my front stuff so short upper control arms those are just generic eBay upper control arms extended Godspeed toe traction and camber arms and GK Tech 10 millimeter spacers Nothing really more to it. People make it sound really complicated, but that's really about it. If you have a good fabricator, it's um, it's not too difficult. I, if you have any questions, let me know down below. If I did something wrong, please let me know down below. But this is how I figured out how to do it. It works, clearly. The car runs and drives right now. It's not aligned, and I probably won't have that in this video just because I'm sick of piling up content. I want to be putting it out to you guys. Um, I just figured one big camber video would be cool so you could see start to finish how to do it. But uh, that's really it, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.